And welcome back to Cigar Time, your favorite neighborhood TV show the, all the, about premium the, cigars. Confused. Well, yeah, that was three that was five. I I, it was the countdown. I was yeah. all messed up. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> she started at, at three instead of five. That's why I said. I couldn't yet. Yeah, that's why I said. Shut up. <laughs> I couldn't get it right. So welcome back. Thanks for coming. Yeah. Thanks for watching. This thing is huge. It is. It's, it's, it's a big cigar. Big cigar. Come on, I set you guys up. That's what she said. Yeah. That's right. There you go. Uh -huh. um, mm -hmm. Today we're smoking the TAA La Gloria Cubano. What's it called? No, it's the La Gloria, La Gloria Cubano, Cubano TAA. TAA. That's, That's why I get what it. it's called. I'm having a hard time. Today's not a good day, but anyway. Uh, in case you don't know, TAA stands for Tobacconists Association of America. Mm -hmm. It's an organization of the largest and most successful brick and mortar retailers in the industry. Mm -hmm. uh, there are about 70 companies, 75 companies involved. And the neat thing is every year, oh a lot of the manufacturers make something exclusive for the TAAs. So in most of our stores, you'll see a cabinet with just TAA stuff that's exclusive to us in this area. We're the only one within like 90 miles or oh, well, you have, 100 you have miles. To you have to go west. Harrisburg. Harrisburg, yeah. I think I made a mistake. You what, did. What was your mistake? You, like these the are forged. Word. Well, no, Paul made a mistake. These oh. are forged, yeah. not general. Okay, so we got forged. Way to go, Paul. It's the same thing, same company. I know. It's an STG. 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 So this is... Not to this be confused with an STG. This might be the first year there was a La Gloria. Yeah, I don't remember one before this. I don't this. think there's been one before. I don't remember a... That's since we've been part general? of General? Uh, even a general product? Yeah, yeah. But, but my memory's just nothing anymore. Yeah, I don't remember a General or Forged having it. Because Forged has one too, right? I mean, General has one with the Sancho Panza. Sancho Panza, yeah. This is the first year, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, Paul, what's the blend on this? I'm going to tell you in a sec. Thought you had it all queued up. I thought I did too. But life is ju just not that simple. Okay, so it's got an Ecuadorian Sumatra wrapper. It's got a Honduran Habano binder. And the fillers are Seco and Lajero from the Dominican Republic and Honduras. No Nicaraguan in this? Not a Scandalous. single leaf of Nicaraguan. How's it supposed to be any good? <laughs> and actually, I find this idea, the filler blend, I find kind of interesting. It's just Seco and Lajero. And if you remember, Seco no is, not, is not no Novelato. No Viso. There are both of those. But I know. But, but not in this cigar. Uh, Seco is the leaf that doesn't deliver a whole lot of flavor. But what it does do is reduce the saliva in your mouth. So you're not spitting all over from smoking the cigar. Yeah, bro, I like that because it dries it out. Hard. Say that again? It, it makes, makes the cigar very no, hard. That's a different <laughs> kind of seco. Seco means dry in Spanish. But when they talk about seco leaf, it's not a dry leaf. Mm -hmm. It's a leaf that dries out your mouth a little bit. And since we tend to salivate when we're smoking. That's true. Or that's my, real good. Or in my case, I salivate when I think about smoking. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, something to dry it out a little bit is a good idea. And cigars with no seco in them, you will notice it. Yes. Absolutely. Well, that's why we got you the bigger ashtray this week. Not only not go? only can you make the ashtray this time. But yeah, I might hit it. Yeah. Where'd the bucket go? It's over there. He didn't want to put it on the yeah. screen. I'm too short. The bucket was covering half Kitty of my cat. face. Yeah. <clears throat> I got a, I don't know about you guys, I got a very uh, distinct almond taste lighting as I lit the cigar. Well, I, didn't I know forgot to do a dry draw. I don't know if you're going to get it, but I, I, I got an omelet. Yeah, right away. You got what? it, too? Right away. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. I didn't notice. Shoot. I thought I got a toast, like kind of a toasty. Maybe it was a toasted almond. Maybe it was toasted almond. Okay. It is a kind of toasty taste in the cigar. Like it is. Like toasted bread. With almonds on it. <laughs> almond paste. <laughs> That's what, that's what they use to put it together. It's the Nutella cigar. <laughs> oh, dude, can you imagine? <laughs> That'd be nice. It'd be oh, interesting. Man, for Java. Sure. Yeah, that's Java. That's not... Without a cigar. 
There's no what you call There's no hazelnuts yeah. in a job. You don't know that. I'm pretty sure. But you don't know. I'll ask Rocky. He was just here on Saturday. Yes, well, don't you think you should have asked him when he was here? I'll call him. Alex, anyway. Alex was here. Alex was. So, what's going on? Anything? <laughs> what's going on? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I've been learning a lot about port. Port wines? Yes. Okay. I, Watched uh, for some reason. For the you're, last you're hooked on these do documentaries. At night, I just That's sit a good there. Thing. They're, they're fantastic. I keep watching them. I'm, I'm watching like like experts rate wines, and I'm like, why, why am I watching? But I'm fascinated by it. So let me ask you a question. Yes, sir. Other than the fact that it comes from Portugal, what makes a port a port? Uh, prob I, I guess what you're getting at is that it's blended with. Well, it's a blend of a bunch of grapes, and it's blended with brandy. And adding the brandy actually... Makes it sweeter? It makes it sweeter, but it stops the fermentation as soon as it's added. I guess it's, I think it's because yeah. the alcohol just kills all the, all well, the, the bacteria yeast. and, and yeah. yeast. Um, but so I was, yeah, I was, I was learning a lot about port actually last night. Um, and I didn't, what I was most excited about, because I can't drink a whole bottle of wine or, or port in a day, but what I was most excited about was that Tawny Port's and late bottle vintage, you can open, and it has something to do with the oxidation, or it's not oxidized. Or I, I, anyway, you can you can leave it open, and it's still it's going to be good for like four to five weeks. Really? Yes. So I was. That's I, ra I ran in the house. Very rare among wines. Yes, I ran, I ran right in my house <laughs> and was looking for an LBV or a. Ta <laughs> I'm like, nah. Like, Isn't that the reason why they put the brandy in it so it lasts longer and doesn't? That's they, why they originally they did it. Brandy. I guess, but <laughs> yeah, because they would ship it from Portugal to England, because they were hooked on that stuff. And when they were just shipping the wine itself, it was spoiling. So they added brandy to keep it fresh. Uh, maybe. To keep it fresh. Uh, it could be. Fresh. Yeah, uh, but even... It's kind of like an IPA has all that hops in it, so it doesn't spoil on the trip to India. Or at least Is that why they call it India Pale? Yeah. No. Interesting. When the, when I had the, one last night. When the British took over India... <coughs> Uh, and they had to ship a whole lot of beer out there for the soldiers. It kept spoiling on the boats because it was a long trip. So they added a whole lot of hops, which acted like a preservative, uh -huh. but also changed the character of the beer dramatically. Hmm. Interesting. And so port, in a way, is like that. Yeah. I mean, but, but I don't know if that's the reason they added it. But maybe it is the reason the they added it. That's the original that reason. Is your reason. Okay. That is the original uh, But like, if, you, if you get a, a vintage port, um, it, it 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 has to be finished in a day, and it, it was fun because they in the, they they went through all the different versions of port: ruby, tawny, Madeira, uh, a white port, LBV, vintage, and there's another one called like a coulee or I forget exactly what it was, but and it shows how long they have to age, and some are, you know some have to be aged in wood barrels, some have to be uh, some are aged in stainless steel. It was pretty fascinating. And then I, I kind of always thought Tawny was like a, eh. I was kind of snobbish. I'm like, I'm only drinking vintage port. <laughs> but I, I, did, I didn't realize that. And I was like, yeah, Tawny, a, a 10 year, 20 year, 30, 40 year. I was like, eh, it's just marketing, but it's, it's, it's not. It's not. It's actually, it's, it's very good quality port. And I'm talking so much and I'm excited about it because I, I happen to love port. I think it's, it's the perfect drink for me because it's super sweet. It is very sweet. Yeah, and that's, first time and that's what you need all the sweetening up you can get. Yeah, that's yeah. right. <laughs> Big turn. The first time I ever had a port was when we had our members' dinner. We had it over next door at the fountain side. With Avo? And with Avo, yeah. And we had bottles of six grape yeah. mm -hmm. port. You know what, it was a, really good. For like a $20 bottle or whatever, that's actually it's decent stuff. It is. It was I very good. That's a ruby, I think. It was, I went out and bought like three or four bottles and they were gone in less than a week. And I, now I'm, not a, I'm not a wine drinker, but they were, they were gone. Yeah. So anyway, I, 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 think I'm, I think I'm fascinated by all this stuff with wine and everything because it's so similar to like the harvest, the planning, the harvesting, the care that goes into it, the making, and the the, 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 the blending, the fermentation, the, yeah. the blend, all of that is all it, it <coughs> relates to me. It re relates direct, even the terroir. 
relates directly to cigars. And I, I'm, I'm excited about it because I, I remember back when I, when I first started smoking cigars. There was even no thought of being in the business at that point, but I would but get cigar fishing on it. for next week. Pairing up a cigar with the port. Oh, I'll do that right here. Uh, okay, uh, okay. okay. I would, I would do. You know what? I'll finish your statement. I like. Oh, oh, and because about. I think it's so, it's so similar to cigars. And when I yeah. first, when I first started smoking cigars, I read everything I could get my hands on. I don't care what it was. If it had the word cigar in it, or if the cigar was in the copy somewhere, I was reading it, and I was on the. This was back on the internet. You could type in cigar, and it would be article after article about cigars. Now it's. Nothing but sales. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that's why I'm so excited about it. I'm actually even thinking about buying some vines and growing wine, and growing, growing grapes and making wine in my yard. Pennsylvania port. Yeah. <laughs> my great grandfather did that. Really? Well, he didn't speak any English. He right, right off the boat. He. Mine in isn't so good either. In his back. <laughs> <laughs> in his backyard. In his backyard in Ambler, he had this vineyard. Um, Little vineyard, and he also had a smokehouse where he did all kinds of meats and did. That's awesome. That's fantastic. Yeah, he had great. He had grapes. He had uh, olives. Yeah, I was going to say he probably had olives. olives, tomatoes, and he smoked meats and he made super sod, and it was awesome. So he made his own wine and everything. Yeah. It was pretty cool. I was, I was too young. I mean, he was he was in his eighties, and I was probably eight or nine. That's, I didn't understand it. That's peasant magic. Yeah, so. My wife's uh, grandfather did the same thing. He ran a general store in, uh, actually on Germantown Avenue. Mm -hmm. And uh, he smoked all his own meats, he grew his own vegetables and put them in the general store for sale. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. My mother's parents, when they immigrated here, uh, opened up a little fruit and vegetable shop in New York and they would save up all of the spoiled fruit, and my grandfather would make some kind of brandy-ish kind of mm -hmm. concentrated fruit drink out of that. Well, isn't brandy, brandy's, wi brandy is basically wine that's, what? Where the alcohol longer, is, is boosted. It's fortified wine. That's what they call it. Oh, okay. I didn't realize that. You didn't see a documentary on it? No, but I'm, I'm like looking forward to when I, when I found everything I can find about wine, I'll probably get into going to coffee. And I did watch, actually what started this whole venture was uh, bourbon. I watched one on bourbon that was, that was pretty fascinating. My yeah. mom used to drink. Happy birthday, mom. We Pleasure didn't. Happy birthday, mom. Happy birthday, mom. We didn't talk about the price. I believe this yeah. is about $11. I thought I remembered ten ninety nine. Right pretty box. close. Save a penny. Buy it from Scott. Um, <laughs> no, I wasn't. I wasn't. I wasn't trying to disagree with you. I was. I was You're confirming that, that that you were. I was correct. in the right range. Yeah. No, okay. I was just confirming you were correct. Eleven dollars. Is anybody else finding that the entirety of the flavors of this cigar are in the front third of your tongue? Yes. Yeah. Now that you it just doesn't you touch it. any other part of no. my palate. No, not the sides. Nothing. Yes. Is it, it good? Yeah, right. <laughs> There's a familiar, familiar flavor in there. I'm not. It's kind of like sweet. I want to say like I want to say nougat, but I'm getting a slight <laughs> citrus flavor. Really? Are you? Just a little bit. I'm getting a ton of mineral, like er, minerally earth. Yeah, me too. Got a ton of ash in front of me. You want the bucket? I think I need it. <laughs> that are different hands. The the butt bucket or the drool bucket? So what, okay, oh, so let's give our initial, our official first impressions. Okay. I'm gonna take this over, show us Rob. Yeah, Not done. I'm, I'm sleeping. On the power scale, I give it a two. Okay. Yeah, it's not very strong. I would have to agree with, yeah. It's not very strong. No strength, but that. Um, I, I got the almond, like you said, a little bit toasty. Yeah. And for some reason, I'm picking up a little bit of citrus right now. Okay. <clears throat> well, to me, this cigar is all about minerally, or at least so far, all about minerally earth. There's virtually no pepper or spice to this cigar at all. Mm -hmm. At least I'm, I'm not getting, getting I'm any. I'm getting a little bit of, of a sweeter spice, like cinnamon. Yes. 
Oh, okay. A, on oh, the, right. very, the very, aftertaste. Very subtle. Yeah, it's not, finish. it's, you really got to dig to, 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 to get it. I'm getting that on the roof of my mouth, actually. And when you put your tongue to the roof, roof of your mouth, that's where I get it. The retro hail is yeah. really interesting. It is interesting, and I was, I've been trying to figure out what it is. It seems like a bunch of different nuts. Yeah. No, I can't peg one nut, but it's very, very it nutty. Is, it is interesting. Well, yeah. one nut. <laughs> Not that Scott. <laughs> it's got a sweetness to it. I mean, I agree with everything everybody else said. Um, it's got the a sweetness. It's got a little bit of a touch of cinnamon. And I think I want to call that sweetness like a nougat, like a, a, a three musketeer, like the... You yeah, know, the Three Musketeers kind mm. of thing. Mm -hmm. And it's it's slightly. So, sometimes I get a cigar that I say is retro, and it reminds me of like the cigar and tobacco from the '90s. And this isn't quite that old, but it reminds me of something that was like older. I don't know if this it's, if the tobacco is aged for a long time. It is actually. Is it really? I, I believe the finished me, cigar no, was aged for four years. Really? So then the, the, the tobacco was probably it, at least well three aged years. before that. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Interesting. Yeah. Look at that. Nice. Uh, uh, to your point, Paul, through the retro hail, it's like you 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 get your ha a handful of <coughs> excuse me mixed nuts and just throw them in your mouth. That's what that's it's like. what that's what it tastes like. Yeah. Yeah. You without, can't you can't pick out one nut. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can't pick out one, like an almond, or you can't pick out a a, a peanut or a this or just a cashew. All kind of it's just all kinds. On. Yeah, it's just like a handful of mixed nuts. It makes me want to <coughs> put on a top hat and swing the cane and be like <laughs> yeah, Mr. Peanut. Mr. Peanut. Good um, monocle. Yeah. This is probably, to my mind, one of the most fully packed cigars I've ever had. That still draws like a dream. This cigar is hard as a rock and full of tobacco. It is. It is. But it draws dense. perfectly. It's pretty dense. Yeah. What uh, do you know if it's un tubular or? Un -tubular? I don't know all the or whatever it's called. And booking. by the way, it's probably booking. By the way, Noose, I'm getting a little bit of that citrus that you mentioned. Just just a little bit. Mm -hmm. I'm not getting that. I am getting. Shit, get out of here. Are you supposed to how far along you are? Yeah, you should be getting it by now. <laughs> I am They're getting comparing size. I I, uh, <laughs> I definitely am getting the the cinnamon taste, <laughs> but it's it's not, and it's cinnamon cinnamon like cinnamon powder, not not like hot tamale cinnamon. Right, today. right. It doesn't overpower <laughs> anything. It's like the cinnamon inside a, a sweet roll. I don't yeah, know, I don't need sweet rolls. So Rob, do we, we have, have any events? This do week? we have any events this week, there, Scott? <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to say that. <laughs> I know, because that's all you're looking at the paper. I know. <laughs> uh, we do, Rob. You don't, you don't Inter say. Interestingly hey, enough. You don't why say. don't you share them with yeah, us? Share it with a, our audience. All right, well, <coughs> tomorrow. <coughs> 29th. 29th. Very good. Thanks. Um, from 3 to 7 in Downingtown, we're going to have Veronica. Ah, Christoph. Christoph. Um, <laughs> Still okay. I know you don't. you got to listen to the song. Friday is, a, and Phoenixville is an event with General from 4 to 7. Uh, Oxford Valley Movie Night. I forgot to look up the movie. I'm, I apologize. She always picks a good movie for me. She does. Oh, does yeah. she? What, what has she done? She's done Godfather and Terminator, I think. And, um, she mixes Apple it up. Apple Dumpling Gang. No, <laughs> fried <laughs> green <laughs> tomatoes. No, not fried green tomatoes. <laughs> but that would be funny if she did the Apple Dumpling Gang. That would be funny. Yeah. It would. Um, and then also Friday in Doylestown, their um, foundation cigar event. You know, if old fashions like always and blues music and stuff. And then moving into next week, Monday, July 3rd, um, is their traditional, the first Monday of every month is Armatic Monday with uh, EPC. That's Ernesto Downing, Perez Carrillo. Downingtown. In Downing, that, did I not say Downingtown? No, you didn't. My apologies. Um, and then just, I'll jump ahead a week. Uh, next week in Lancaster, it's General on uh, Thursday. General Cigars from 1 to 5. Uh, in Downingtown, uh, is a Perdomo event from 3 to 7. And then on Thursday, Westchester's having an event with EPC and the Phillies. Um, and I don't have a time on that, but whenever the Phillies game is. Yeah. 
I would um, and then in Horsham, there's a Perdomo event from 3 to 7. Very On nice. Thursday. There was supposed to be a Christoph event here in Horsham, but they canceled it for some reason. I don't know why. Because she heard me sing the song. Veronica? Um, put on your yarmulke. It's oh, time yeah. for Veronica. Veronica. Oh, yeah. God. <laughs> so. Scaring the broads away again. Yeah. I'm good at that. <laughs> <laughs> da -da -da. Sad but true. So it. Da -da -da. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, there was some legislation that just passed recently, and I can't remember what it was. Damn no, I'm it. glad you brought it up then. No, no, no. I'm trying to hope that, that you saw it. I didn't that see anything new on the legislation. The only thing front. I think I saw was the governor. I think the governor signed the tax cap in, in Nevada or something. I don't want that. I, I don't. I don't. I look. I look yeah. at half. Yeah. Talk about every day. That. Yeah. And I don't. I, I really don't recall seeing anything. I think. Well, no. I recall seeing something. I don't remember what it was. This is going to sound like sacrilege because we hate regulation of the tobacco industry. But I think that the industry would benefit from something like the bottled and bond bill on bourbon. Where you get to say certain things, but you only get to say them if you meet certain criteria. Yeah. And then you know what you're getting. Right. That makes sense, actually. Kind of like I said last week. I think it was a... Some <laughs> <laughs> kind of like you said. Something got shot down in California. They were trying to restrict something in so California. It was a blimp? <laughs> blimp. Small aircraft, no. Some kind of bill that restricted your smoking in California. But oh, they was shot it at cigar them. lounges? I can't remember. Or was it, it was it, it that bill where they you know they started progressively progressively making the age higher? No, no, people, no that was so that, that was, was shot down a while ago about uh, them g saying that if you were born before nineteen or after nineteen or two thousand seven, you couldn't. Yeah. You could smoke. You could have tobacco of any kind ever. It wasn't even voted when you're, down. When you're there, 40. Was just, there was just no support behind it. It was it was an they idea that just didn't. Yeah. yeah. Well, that, Paul, that's look, the look, dumbest look, thing ever. Look up cigar regulation that and add that Rob saw last week. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know I'm how sure to type that. Yeah. Uh, but that's the dumbest thing ever. Why do you th they think that you can make it illegal to smoke a a, a legal product? After like you're born in uh, 2000, you know, if you're 45 years old, you're not allowed to smoke anything. I sometimes That's wonder if they if they did that for because it's an election year or something. Just like in, in Pennsylvania, every couple of years they they talk about a tobacco tax, and it's just it's just somebody somebody and then from the, the lobby trying to justify, the Amish justify lobby their job. Kills that every time. The what? Yeah, the Amish lobby. Oh yeah, which is very big in Pennsylvania. And, and powerful. Yes. They're not just big. They have a lot of power. Yeah. Did I ever tell you about when I was in college, we went out to, I don't know, some, a school in Lancaster uh, with some of my college friends. Was, we were playing for a football game. And uh, my friend's from North Jersey, and he saw the, the horse and buggy. The Amish? Yeah. He, 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 thought that, he thought they were making a movie. He goes, oh, look, they're making a movie. I'm like, <laughs> what are you I'm talking about? about the Amish. He's about the Amish. They're, they're making a movie. And this was right about the time when Witness came out. Oh, okay. okay. So he's going on. I'm like, no, they, they live here. He's like, get the hell out of here. He didn't believe me. He's playing from North Jersey. So, I well, mean, he'd never. I'm You've like, they live it. here. He just, he, 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 he didn't get it. So, <laughs> so there you go. That's kind of you know? funny. Another reason. I got that going for me. Good. Education in North Jersey schools. I well, wasn't North Jersey school. He's from the. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. I got you. All there right, you I'm, we're on the same page. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Another reason not to go to Jersey. There's only one reason to go to Jersey. What exit? To get to New York. <laughs> to get to, to get to New York. <laughs> sand. No sand. Sand. There is sand in New Jersey. A lot of it. The whole coast. Oh, there's a lot of interior sand too. All right. Yeah. Should we do our final review? Final review. Yep. Yes. Well, the strength profile hasn't changed at all. No. Most of the flavors that we've already mentioned are coming in and out now. Mm hmm So it's getting a little more complex. As, you know, I mean, they're real complex flavors, but, you know, they blended it well. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm giving it a nine. Okay. Paul? 
I find that the flavors stayed exactly the same. Mm -hmm. They didn't change at all. In fact, I don't think really anything about the cigar changed since I lit it. Okay. Uh, I think it's a very good cigar. It is not my personal palate. Mm -hmm. I'll give it an 8.75. Scott? I agree on the, the uh, strength. It's not strong at all. Not even for me. I find things stronger than you guys for some reason. Um, Wimp. What's, uh, what do you, what, this is a double chrono, right? You think? I mean, it's it's not a Toro. It's not a it's too thick for a Churchill. So I'm guessing double. It's a corona. little long for a Churchill too. I'd call it a double Corona. Yeah. Okay. Seven and a half by fifty. Yeah. Um, and and the reason I'm I'm thinking that was like we shouldn't smoke cigars this that are this big because I'm only a quarter of the way through the cigar. So my rating is based on the first inch as, right. as opposed yeah. to the, the the first maybe even first maybe even the first quarter. Um, so I don't, I don't know how the cigar is going to develop, but um, so based on what I've smoked so far, I mean we've given the reviews, a little bit of cinnamon and the nougat, um, the touch of cit citrus that I think went away, Moose. Do you still have? Do you still get it? Mm, every now and then, your palate's a little bit yeah, better I mean, than mine. Uh, uh, Maybe um, a lot better, but <laughs> it, we started out that I when I hit it, it was prominent. Mm -hmm. Now it's backed off quite a bit. But you, you, every now and then, it's, like I said, it, it's like going in and out. Yeah, because I, I did hit it, but it was just a... And I'm, I'm glad, because I'm not a... I like citrus fruit, but I don't like it in my cigar. For some reason. I agree. I mean, it doesn't ruin... It doesn't ruin the whole cigar. I no, just no, don't no. like that particular flavor. Um, so any, anyway, so that being... All that being said, I would... I agree with Moose. I'd give this a nine. And I would <coughs> like to add, based on the wrapper... And the fillers, there's no reason I should like this cigar. None whatsoever. It's just not th just not what I traditionally like. But the, the well, however, you like you like Ecuador Sumatra. Oh yeah, you did say that. I was thinking it was. That's the binder. Honduran Habano. Wow. Oh. Well, no, I like Habano. Anyway, I'm not a big fan of of um, Dominican fillers for the most part, but it's. Goes to show you, it's about the, the blending yeah. and how oh, they put absolutely. those together. And this stuff, whoever whoever did this, it's Knew not Ernie anymore. Doing. Definitely works. Yeah, I, I agree. I pretty much agree with everything you just said because I'm not that, and it's got Honduran tobacco, and I'm not a Honduran fan. So, um, long story short, I give it a nine. Also, I think it's a, it is a very good cigar. Uh, I'd smoke it again. So I'm the outlier. It's okay. Yeah, it's all right. Thanks for watching. Don't forget our uh, it's usually me. Our uh, pack show that comes up uh, in about uh, ten seconds. <laughs> 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 in about 10 Thanks Life's for watching. Ciao for now, everybody. Smoke off and smoke happy. Hi.